Hey everyone, John with the GSSI training team here to demonstrate how Geolytics's cloud-based GPR processing software allows you to integrate RTK GPS with GSSI's GPR equipment to carry out utility locates and create a map of your findings. I'm here at our Nashua, New Hampshire headquarters with a G2 tablet-based utility scan system. I have a Reach RS2 GPS receiver, which is using the Massachusetts Correction Network MACORS to achieve sub-decimeter GPS accuracy. We're going to quickly collect a GPS-located, widely spaced GPR grid to locate the utilities that come into this side of our building. The first thing to do on any job is take a site walk. You can often find many of the utilities on site without taking any of your tools out of the truck. Right by the start of our grid, we have a storm drain. Make sure to look down into storm basins to look for any pipes connected to it. If you look to the bottom of this one, you would see a pipe heading towards our building at an angle. A little further down the road, we have a water valve. This doesn't necessarily mean a water line is coming towards our building here, but if we find a utility in this area at a depth below the frost line, it's a safe bet that it's a water line. Next, we have our gas service tucked into the side of the building. These are supposed to have tracer wires so they can be traced with utility locating wands using a transmitter box, but ours does not have a tracer wire, so we'll be relying on GPR to locate this critical utility. A little farther along the wall, we have our fire department hookup, so we may have a water line entering the building here. One final thing that I found as I finished up my site walk, a sprinkler head. Some clients may not care whether you mark out irrigation lines, but we'll try to find this one. To collect my GPR grid, I'm going to walk back and forth along the field site with fairly wide spacing between my lines. My goal is to hit every utility at least five or six times, and to make sure I have a scan along all four sides of the area I'm responsible for. If it were a smaller area, I would use a tighter line spacing to make sure I had enough scans across each utility. We don't need to stop and start lines. Geolytics will clean up the line positioning for us, but we do need to collect along both axes. In this case, that means I'll have a set of lines running east-west and a set of lines running north-south. Again, there's no need to stop and start data collection when switching between the two directions. I'm going to collect everything as a single GPR file. Now I'm back in the office with my GPR files downloaded to my PC. I'm going to create a new folder in Geolytics, then a new project, and import my GPR profile, including the DZT, DZX, and DZG files. I'll pick a material type based on the dielectric calibration I did in the field. We had slightly damp soil when I collected this. If necessary, we can recalibrate the dielectric in the project. I'm going to select the discrete targets option so that Geolytics automatically processes the dataset for target picking, and I'm going to select do not create slices. I didn't collect dense enough data to create a 3D model. Now we need to split this single profile into multiple lines in two directions. First, I'm going to split the file where I switched from collecting east-west lines to north-south lines. I'll go to the positioning menu at the top, and then I'll right-click on the 90-degree bend in my data and select Split Profile. Now I have two profiles, and I'll select each one in turn and use the Split Zigzag Pattern option. This will automatically detect when I was turning my GPR card around and leave behind only the straight line segments that I need. Finally, I'll add a new process in the position menu, offset correction. My GPS receiver has about 0.1 seconds of time lag, so I'll enter negative 0.1 seconds here, and Geolytics will shift my GPS locations to account for that lag. Now we can double click a profile to open up the 2D data view. I want to find and pick any utilities in the subsurface, and Geolytics has a multiple profiles option that will let me view up to six profiles at a time. I don't have a big enough monitor for that, but I'll view three at a time and expand the bottom window so I have a little more space to view the data. Utilities should show up repeatedly across multiple lines, so viewing multiple profiles at the same time lets me quickly assess what reflections are likely to be utilities, rather than rocks or roots. I can begin interpretation by adding a point interpretation layer and selecting the edit points option at the top. Now I can place a dot on each utility in the data one at a time using my site walk to identify the specific utility type where possible. 
I'll pick this large hyperbola first. I know, based on my sight walk, as well as the starting point, depth, and angle that it's traveling, that this must be the storm drain line running to the storm basin we saw in the field. I'll change the color to green and rename this layer Storm Drain. Now I can do the same for each utility that I find in the data. I'm looking for reflections that show up in multiple profiles and trace out into a line. Here's a look at everything I ended up picking. We could export this as is, but let's create a polyline for each utility, connecting the beginning points to the endpoints. Here's a look at everything including the polylines. We can export this as a CSV file or as a KMZ that we can immediately open in Google Earth. We could also add the results to a client base map in GIS or CAD software because Google Earth's imagery is not always an accurate representation of the location of surface features. All told, it took me about three hours to collect my GPR data, transfer it to a computer, and pick and export the location of the utilities to a KMZ file. This is a significant time savings over traditional 3D gridding. While there's no substitute for the survey control that you achieve with gridded 3D, if you're doing a simple utility locate and have an RTK-capable GPS receiver, Geolytics paired with GSSI equipment can help you provide utility locating results quickly and accurately to customers who want a GPS-located map of your findings. Thanks for taking the time to learn more about integrating GPS into your GPR surveys, as well as learning about how the partnership between Geolytics and GSSI opens new avenues for collecting and processing your GPR data quickly and efficiently. Reach out to sales at geophysical.com for pricing on a Geolytics subscription or GSSI equipment, and feel free to ask any questions in the comments.